What's up everyone? I hope you're very well. I hope you're having a very good start of the week. Today uh, we're going to do something quite cool. Um, I have uh, a YouTube channel that features bonsai trees. Yeah, And this is a bald cypress. Actually a Montezuma cypress. And you can see that this type of uh, tree grows directly in the water. Yeah, It grows alongside uh, rivers and uh, uh, you know, just at the river banks there, completely flooded all year round. You can see that I'm taking cuttings of it over there. Uh, but this uh, started as a side project on my bonsai trees because uh, in the future I wanted to use this little guy to um, accompany like a, a water bill. Yeah, and so I thought it would be a very good idea to start practicing. And today we're gonna do something uh, very similar, like a very sh um, small pond, like an outdoor mini pond in one of these plastic containers. Yeah, and so uh, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to pause the camera and then I'll show you what I'll be using. It's going to be very similar to the aquarium builds, to the fishbowl builds, because we're going to feature uh, a lot of aquatic plants, aquarium plants, and we're going to use the wall stat method. So let's go ahead and check it out. So this is the container that I'm going to use. You can see that it's a nice size. You can find it at the dollar store. And uh, I got the gardening soil over here. Yeah. So the first step is uh, to take it and start filling. You know. The base of the pond with gardening soil. Yeah, remember, you got to use the type of garden soil. Uh, sometimes it's called black soil, but it doesn't have any added fertilizers or anything. Because uh, that's, uh, that's better for the aquatic plants. Uh, maybe if it has some other things that could be harmful for the plants. And if you want to keep fish in here, that would be terrible. Yeah, so for example, you also got to pay attention to these huge chunks. This is sort of like a root that was uh, decomposing in the soil. That's not not much of a problem, you know, but still you got to be careful with that. I'm going to fill that up and then uh, we can continue, yeah? Okay, so here we are. That's a nice base layer of the gardening soil. Yeah, if we see any big chunks or maybe, you know, vegetable. <laughs> not vegetable, like plant material that we can remove, well we can do that and then we add um, the sand. I'm going to be using sand, we have it over here. This is our regular river sand and um, I'm using this because uh, that's what I can find here. It's uh, readily available where I live. Uh, it's very good quality. This actually comes from rivers and so um, You know, it's very cheap very very easy to use So um, it's also inert So it's not uh, like uh, marine sand or sand that you can uh, Get at the beach that would that would that wouldn't work because uh, it has all those little little bits and pieces of shells that can alter the pH of the soil and uh, not not just the soil because we're working with water here right so it would alter the, the pH of the water so anyway that's it now it's covered and the reason why we cover this it's because uh, uh, we don't want the all of the nutrients of the soil in contact with the water because that would just spike the, the growth of algae yeah, that would just be an excess of nutrients in the water. Still, uh, in the first few weeks, you might want to change the water. Yeah, you might want to do some water changes so that the water st stays clear. Uh, but yeah, that would be uh, the first few weeks. And then the whole thing will be balance itself out. Okay, so I also have this rocks over here. And um, I was thinking that I want to have two levels in this build. So, for example, if I use them like so, I think I'll be, I will be able to 
have like another level over here yeah maybe a bit separate from the main body of water that's going to give me the ability that's going to give me the opportunity to work with uh, semi-aquatic plants yeah. it's also going to look very natural uh, I think it's going to be very good yeah so I add a little bit of uh, sand here so I can seal in all of those nutrients and then I add a few little strips of the gardening soil yeah I add them here like so my neighbors are yelling again for the 10th time this day <laughs> so I might have to pause the video but this is what I do and then I continue with the sand I, I do the same thing I did in the bottom yeah I just cover it with sand so that the nutrients don't stay in touch with the water yeah so let's go ahead and do that so there we are we can see that the black soil has been completely covered by the sun and we got two levels right we got a level over here you know which is going to be the deeper level and this is going to reserve for the aquatic plants the aquarium plants and this over here i'm going to use uh, uh, some plants that can survive on the water but that can also thrive you know that can also thrive uh, when immersed so um, let's uh, take a look at those plants. Over here we got the first one. This is the pennywort plant. It's a hydrocotyl. Um, I think it's Brasiliensis. You can see that a, a couple of weeds are also growing right next to it. Uh, and um, you know we might have to separate this and then plant it, but it's a very very easy to propagate plant yeah so this is the first one uh, in my desk where I'm growing my terrariums and my aquariums uh, we got the the others that we're gonna use so let's take a look at those as well so here are <laughs> some other plants that I'm gonna use this one over here it's an if I'm not mistaken it's called an iliocarion yeah and this is also a plant that can grow immersed yeah so I'm gonna use this one along with the pennywort. I'm not going to take any of the fish, by the way. Uh, so this is one. And right next to it, we got a Hygrophilia polysperma rosa nerving. That's uh, quite a mouthful, but that's the scientific name. Yeah. So this one, this one over here, we got another one that I'm going to use, which is the, I've got a ton of Bucephalandras over here that I've just propagated. Uh, we got the Iliocaris that I'm also going to use to and uh, we can also see over here rotalas. These are going to be growing in the submerged part, yeah, the aquatic side of the plant. And in the, remember this little micro pond, in the, um, oh, at the beginning of the video where I show you the Montezuma cypress, we could see that we had some other type of hydrocodile. This is hydrocodile. Leucocephala, I think. If not, well, I think it's the other one. The other one is the Leucocephala. This is the scientific names will be down in the description box. But I also have that one, and we're also going to use it. Uh, I think I'm also going to use in the submerged part the um, this one, Sagittarius subulata, because it grows very, very well, and uh, it's going to look really, really good. Yeah, so those are the plants that I'm going to use. The next part of the video will be me planting it. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, I, I forgot. I forgot. I'm also going to use this little lily. Oh, you see that one over there? That one over there with the floating leaves. Oh, I'm also going to use that one. Yeah, so I think it's going to look pretty good. Yeah, I think it's going to be very cool. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, plant them. Okay, so here we have our plants. You can see that I uh, took the pennywort out of the little pot. And uh, over here, I added a little bit of water to the build so that we could just start planting 
and there will be no problem. So the first one that I'm going to plant is the pennywood. Yeah. So like I said, I'm going to use this side of the build to plant it. Yeah. Just so that this is going to be more elevated from the rest of the plants. Yeah. Just build it. Just plant it over here. And I think uh, uh, in the future I'm going to add more, um, what do you call those plants? Palustris? Palustris? Um, you know, I'm going to add more plants that grow very well immersed. Right? So, um, semi-aquatic that's the term I used right <laughs> so I think I'm going to use more semi-aquatic plants in the future uh, but in the meantime I'm just going to be using uh, pennywood um, I think Sagittaria also grows very well immersed but yeah I'm going to use that in the aquatic aquatic side of the build so I got my lily pad over here this plant that was growing in my fishbowl so this is definitely going here in the aquatic side of the build and the little leaps over here oh I also remember that I'm going to use the Eliocarian in the immersed in the raised bed that we have over there a little bit of rotala that we can put here a little bit of that plant came and I'm gonna use it in the submerged part of the build Iliocaris yeah I'm gonna divide this into two but in the meantime I'm gonna plant it here yeah. And of course, all of our hygrophilia. I'm gonna use my fingers in every plant that I use because I just think it's uh, easier. But you could use your 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 tongues to do this. Yeah. So I continue doing this, and uh, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's all planted. Yeah. Okay. So it's all planted now. You can see that the that's the pennywort over here. This is the other type of vidrocodile that I'm also going to be using. Hygrophilias, uh, a little bit of rotala over here, and uh, I also planted the Eliocaris here. And these are Sagittarius. So the last thing that we're going to do is fill this up with water, and then we'll call it a day. Yeah. Uh, a few extra notes on this is uh, the location. You can see that uh, it's growing here next to my bonsai trees. Uh, but you can, uh, you'll, well, you won't be able to see it in the video, but it will have very good uh, natural sunlight most of the day, except for the afternoon and when the sun is the strongest, you know, the sunlight is the strongest in, uh, in the day, during the day. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's see how it looks when it's all filled with water, yeah. And uh, we're done. It's, I know, super murky at the moment, <laughs> but you can see uh, little glimpses of what it's going to look like in a couple of weeks. You can see that the lily pads, the little, you know, floating leaves have started to go to the surface. Uh, these pennywords are going to perk up in no time, yeah, and so this is going to be very, very cool. Uh, like I said, the first couple of weeks you might have to do water changes, but... Uh, other than that, it's going to clear up in a couple of days. Um, yeah, and uh, let's see how it evolves. I hope you liked this video. It was very choppy because I had to edit a lot. Sorry about the audio. Uh, there's a lot of neighbors around here. <laughs> there's also a lot of people who sell things from their cars, you know, and they, they use loudspeakers to promote their products. So uh, if you hear something strange in one of my videos, that's the reason why.
right so anyway i hope you like this video i'm going to show you the update in a couple of weeks um i hope you very well subscribe to this channel my youtube channel um sorry my bonsai channel as well and uh, i'll see you in the next one okay bye and after a couple of days we can see that the water has cleared up and you know the plants are establishing themselves very well the water is crystal clear and uh, this little build it's on its way to be a really really nice and interesting little build yeah so uh, yeah uh, like I said before uh, you know you might want to do a couple of water changes as it establishes so that there can be you know more micronutrients coming from the water that you change and uh, you can get rid of excess nutrients and you don't have you know algae problems or whatever but anyway yeah I really look forward to this build how it looks after a couple of weeks and I'll keep you posted okay so I hope you like this video hope you're having a very nice day and I'll see you in the next one okay bye